Thank you, everybody. So this we this is recorded because we're two select board members, and Massachusetts has a pretty significant uh, yeah. open meeting law. Um, because two, it's a three person board, so two of us in a quorum. So um, we're reporting this. This sort of. I'll try to be on my best behavior. We're supposed to. No, it's never stopped me. So don't worry. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, so the only item on the agenda is conversation with our wonderful new congressman, new for us. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Anything other than that, we have a whole list of yeah, good. Well, that's concerns, you know, yeah. needs, but um, well, thank you. I appreciate it, and I appreciate uh, you know uh, you welcoming me here today. Today, and look at the, um, you know Conway's a new part of my district, and I don't want to be a stranger, so I'm going to come out here and make sure that uh, you know we begin to establish a, a you know solid relationship here. And um, you know, and, and uh, I pride myself in accessibility, and um, and I'm not going to be a stranger. Um, and I'll come anytime you want me to come. And you uh, came to the festival of health. I did, I did, and I will, you know, and I, you know, you will have my personal number. You call me privately, um, and so whatever comes up. But I mean, my job, as I see it, is to kind of learn from you as to what are the needs here in the in the, in the town and, and how we can help. Um, you know, there's lots of federal money that has been given to the state. Um, some of it has gone directly to individual communities, but the big chunk is still with the state. The state, state has more money uh, thanks to the federal government um, from almost every agency and department than ever. We passed uh, the biggest infrastructure bill I think since the interstate highway. So Massachusetts, in addition to its normal Allocation, it gets an additional $12 billion in uh, federal money to be spent on infrastructure projects throughout the Commonwealth. Um, we have the Inflation Reduction Act, which has all kinds of things in it that might or might not be applicable to here. Um, you know, it was just with uh, uh, Scott Soares, who's the uh, head of regional development for USDA talking about some of the programs that they have, loans and grants that are available uh, to communities. And, you know, my view is that the next two years, um, given the change in um, control of the house, uh, you know, are probably not going to be known for gigantic legislative accomplishments in Washington. <laughs> Having said that, all this money, including the opera money, I mean, it, it is been brought to the state agencies in Washington have new resources. So my view is the next few years has to be the implementation um, and making sure that these monies get out to communities and to people. And uh, there's deadlines on those. Yeah, and some of there's some of them you know, on the ARPA money there are deadlines. Okay. Um, and, and I want to thank you for that. For the ARPA money has been a major difference for the for a town. Yeah. We've we've we we've, we've been able to We've, we've assessed, so so a town like ours, we can never really address, we've never been able to address our infrastructural needs. We have a highway garage that took us, I'm not exaggerating, 45 years of votes at town meeting to finally get a new highway facility. And, um, but because of ARPA, because we've been able to sock away $450,000, we're able to actually take our emergency services, you know, our police fire ambulance building, and we're actually able to make that a, 20, I'm not going to say 21st century building, but we're able to come into the 20th century with it and have a bathroom that employees can go to and things like that. So that type of thing that we're able to do with it is, is huge. Um, and we're, we hope to be able to make this the future uh, for all town employees and be able to close the building across the street and sell it. Um, but we need a, this has to be handicap access. All these things like right. that, that something like that can really help us. And, um, Look, you know, we, you know, none of this will be easy, right? I mean, but the deal is, you know, I mean, we're, let's, you know, new year, new opportunities. Let's roll up our sleeves and figure out how we can make some progress here. And, uh, you know, that's, you know, what I want to do. And and so I'm open. I mean, you tell me what, you know, what are the things that I need to know and like where we should be focused. And 
we'll go from there. So the, the other, so just the, the the one thing structurally that we as a community have to deal with every year that we're in a really bad spot about is the, the school is our school. The school schools are two thirds of our budget. Right? The our relationship, the Frontier School, which is the Frontier Regional, which is Sunderland, right. Waitley, Deerfield, and us. That is uh, only regionalized um, seven through twelve. So the, the four towns all have their own elementary schools. It's a town district. The result of that is we don't get transportation reimbursement because we're not fully regionalized. If we if we we, we were on on hook for all of our own transportation costs, um, and if we were fully regionalized, we'd be getting from the state an extra three hundred some four hundred thousand dollars a year. Um, the reason we can't do that as communities is because uh, all the, 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 our, our elementary schools, are they're all town employees. The towns have different insurance policies, di different um, health insurance uh, co-pays for all the town employees. So we have, this, we have the lowest co-pay, I think it's 25%. Sunderland is 50-50. So in order for us to regionalize everybody, all, all the employees would have to be brought up to the highest one. Um, and, and the cost to do that across the thing is millions of dollars. We, in order for us to get to like zero, we have, it's an upfront cost to the towns of, of, million, of a million and a half dollars. Um, and that's the stumbling block. And it's it's uh, the state does not do that, and we cannot do that, and we're sort of stuck in with with a district that, um, that you know we're we're unable to get a hybrid, yeah. yeah, yeah, a hybrid district. We're one of only a handful in the state that's structured like that, mm -hmm. and it just um, we need an act of Congress. <laughs> Well, yeah, yeah. The, the the challenge is most of the school stuff is a state mm -hmm. state jurisdiction, which is not something. I think yeah, I'm just you know wondering why you know why maybe some people in the state can't sit down and, and try to figure out you know what are the what are the options. I mean, I mean if 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 health insurance is going to go up for people that were if you were regionalized. With those with those individuals, right? Who, who, te who teach? The question is, do their salary go up with it? I mean, is there a? How did, yeah, um, how does that balance? They're out? all on the same. They're, they're 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 unionized, so they get the teachers in the four schools all get compensated the same, right. and that the I everybody gets compensated the same. Right. So it just it means the teachers here would have to see how the pocket expenses go up. Is that correct? Well, they, they it, it's. It, it would really be the other towns that that would have their expenses go up to, eat, to because we're the most generous to all to our town employees. So let's um, assume you were able to keep your right. Well, well I, yeah. Oh. I mean, it, well, yeah. So yeah, I, I, I don't. Yeah, I'm not quite. I'm not, I'm not quite sure how to how to thread that needle. But I mean, I, so 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 who's who's who, who's legislative districts are we in now? We're in. Uh, the first Franklin, Natalie, Natalie Lay, and, 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 and Mark, 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 Mark. Okay, all right. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll talk to them. I don't, I, I don't, I don't know how to how to figure that how to figure that out off the top of my head. Apparently, you know, there's there's like zero appetite. There's zero appetite, and the there's only zero appetite to, to to try to figure out difficult twenty issues. Right. right, but I mean, it doesn't mean that they can't be figured out. And the state, the state educational agency is not in favor of expanding. Large sums of money to make it happen. So that's that's where it goes and dies. So so most of the federal funds are coming; they're being funneled through the state, correct? Oh yeah. Yeah. On the on the on the ARPA monies, yeah. Well, not just the ARPA. I'm thinking yeah. of you know. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Well, and all that. Yeah. Other than other than grant assistance and loan programs that uh, like you know if if you yeah we would you know. USDA rural development is working with here for the community facilities yeah, program. Community facilities. Right. So see, this is the problem because you know, of course, it's my job to try to find all this money for the town. Yeah. And in looking at this, it, it seems like the money that we might be able to access is actually in the form of loans. 
instead some, of grants. Some some of them were grants. And so, like I've, I've I've approached USDA, you know, I've tried to to look into this, and it just doesn't seem like we're going to be. So I'm wondering if there's some other for, source that we could tap into for yeah. this public safety building, which would be huge for so us. Potentially, I mean, I mean, uh, potentially. I mean, uh, how much would a public safety? How much is the public safety building? Cost. We don't have the estimate yet. I would say probably half a million. So I would. I mean, we, what I would. I mean, if you have a proposal on that, I would. I would go. I would go to Scott Soares, the head of uh, rural development at USDA. I mean, he's very familiar with Western Massachusetts, mm -hmm. um, and say, you know, does this fit? Yeah, it does. Yeah. I know why. Why? Why wouldn't it fit? I, because of our demographics, because of how much you know we're considered so wealthy, we don't fit into any of the nice. Well, the question is, you may not get you know if you were, I mean you know a, a you know if you're if your economics were that everybody was poor here, you'd probably be eligible for you know a bigger reimbursement grant. But you can get a combination grant loan, for example. So I mean, you may be eligible. I don't know where you fit, but you might be eligible for thirty you know thirty percent or forty percent. Mm -hmm. You know, as opposed to 100, percent but the question is, on a half a million dollars, if you get 35 or 40 or 50 percent, you know, then you're, you know, then you're you're talking about a loan of like what 250 thousand dollars if they can spread it out over 40 years. I mean, you know, I don't know. They're just, you know, I I don't know all of the budgetary challenges that that that, that you face. On the other hand, is that um, you know, I, I think it's it, it, it's it's worth exploring, um, and to see whether you know, and and by the way, I mean, there may be other ways to, you know, try to figure that gap out, whatever the gap may be. I mean, uh, you know, I, I, money is fungible, right? And, and so I mean, you know, let's say you need a new ambulance. I don't know what you do it. I'm just saying, if you, if you do right. Well, I mean, there is a grant program in USDA for that. You may not have been thinking in that terms. You may have been putting money aside for an ambulance, whatever, you, you know, if you get it reimbursed some other way, you can take that money that you put aside and put it toward this project. So I'm just saying we have to look at everything. And so even if there's not $500,000 in one chunk, you know, there may be other things that you are eligible for in this town that you are already planning to expend monies for that you might be able to get reimbursed when well, you need you need a fire truck yes well then it's it's funny you're talking about that because we we are we're setting aside last year was the first year that we were setting aside a hundred thousand dollars a year because 2028 we're due to buy a new fire truck but and, and the only way we can do things is to save up over time so at a bar i mean so you know if you you know if you thought about applying for the you know assistance to firefighters grant program i mean you know i mean i right? yeah yeah so, so <laughs> all years, i'm listening to this as the congressman just mentioned the afg program yeah. um it, it is it's for a number of uh, kind of equipment related needs in particular for, for fire department and equipment, also, sometimes trucks exactly and and on the subject of trucks as, as the congressman just said um usda that's one of their programs as well there may be some funding for, for fire trucks in particular ambulances fire trucks but potentially police cruisers that sort of thing Wonderful. Yeah. So I'm just curious, Jim and Kobe, is there some type of resource that town officials could go through and see what funds would cover what areas? Yes. Yeah, so so when we're talking about AFG, um, they, they have a lot of information available. They also right. sometimes have briefings um, for, for folks. Right. And we, and, we, and we can hook you up with them. I, I guess the question, I think what you're asking, is there like one general. that says, here's, here's the encyclopedia yeah. on everything that's Some available? Grants. No, there isn't. Because it's constantly changing. Uh, and should so there, be? <laughs> there probably should be, but everything changed. Yeah, changed. Uh, no, uh, no, no. On the federal level, they were starting to do something like yeah. that. Because like in Massachusetts, we had the community one stop where they're trying to bring this together. And I thought I heard something on the federal level that was well, kind of leading you, that way. But... Yeah, I'm not even aware of it on the state level. Like if you if you typed in, if you went on to, I mean, it's just like, you know, things are changing and evolving so rapidly. I mean, if you went into the the web page of you know US Department of Transportation, you could probably, you know, Google it. Google it and go through and figure out, you know, all the different programs. But then, you know, that's a I think what I would let me make this I think what you what, what I would suggest is as you get come these projects, I mean you obviously talked to Senator Mark and Representative Blake, but let us know too. 
So like, for example, I mean, you know, fire truck, okay? Well, so if you called us, would say, is the federal assistance to firefighters grant program? Maybe, you know, there's a USDA grant program that can provide reimbursement for, you know, first responder vehicles. Maybe you fit that. Um, you know, maybe you don't, but I mean, the deal is, you know, let's, let's, let, let's explore whether it, it is. And before you go and write your, app, your application and spend a lot of time doing it, if, it, if the answer is definitely no, then you then don't waste your time, right? But the answer is, yeah, you know, and the AFG, the G grant, the, the five years grant, sometimes it takes a couple of rounds because there's such a, a backlog of requests, you know, to get up at the front. But I mean, I would, I would absolutely see whether you fit for any of those programs because you know then this money that you're saving, if you can get it reimbursed, then you can put it toward the building, right? Yeah. Um, so so we 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 so so if um, so if you're interested, so if there's a need for a fire truck, we should start now, maybe getting some basic information from you. Kobe will, will, you know, we'll get it, and we can start reaching out to the program, and maybe have somebody talk to you so that you are familiar with what they're looking for, and we'll figure out how to put together a grant that. If it's not really the kind of that could happen, that'd be massive. Yeah. These types of expenditures are so are so difficult for a small town. So, mm -hmm. like, you know, we're, we're saving a hundred thousand each. So that's three percent of our municipal budget. But that's, you know, that's but it, it, the good story would be if you save that money and then you need it, mm -hmm. and then you yeah. can put it towards something else. Right? Yeah. 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 So just to just to let you know what we're working on right now, well, we, we did a survey of at least the town departments and boards and committees and asked what are your priorities for the town. I haven't gotten to the public yet, but we'll, we'll get there. <laughs> but number one was doing this public safety building. So just to give you some background, we we got the highway facility built, and that took. The highway out of the top of our town offices and out of the garage. So then we're like, okay, in the garage we have EMS services. How are we going to restructure that? And that's where we came up with the idea of let's build a, a building next to it for offices and showers and bathrooms and stuff like that. So that's what we're working on. And that'll be our public safety complex. That'll take the rest of the people who are upstairs in the town offices out. Then if we can retrofit this building, put a lift in here so it's all ADA compliant. We could put the rest of us upstairs and then put that back on the tax rolls. That's kind of like our long term. But that makes sense. All. <laughs> <laughs> so, so anything you know, like you know, we'll be looking for. I'll be trying to get a grant for the lift and that kind of stuff to for this building. And elevators are expensive. But they are. Yeah. Well, there's a difference between an elevator and a lift. Yeah, it's a lift we're looking at, and the lift we're looking at is right the main. Yes. Yeah. How much is a lift? Underground. Yeah. yeah. But how much it would be but an elevator with maintenance and it's, well, stuff. it's underground for the thing itself. Just for the thing itself. Here, right. Yeah. Which is another 30 yeah. or 40 or 50. Right. Probably, yeah. Yes. Yeah. But we probably could get a hundred grand from the mod grant for that. Yeah. So or maybe more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, and 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 though the income levels of people here, you know, may be regarded as comfortable um you don't have a lot of people here so the, the deal is is that i mean you know so the tax base you know if you had quadruple you know 10 times the population you know it's, it's different right it's all different so it's, it's, but that's part uh, yeah, of right. we, we can never we can never expand our tax base because we are 100 percent well and 100 percent septic and no business is ever going to come here um, and for that reason, and go. probably three quarters of the town is occupied by forests. You know, state, you know, forest. state yeah. forests. So that's yeah. off the tax rules. And you get you get any reimbursement? And a lot of the, 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 the pilot thing, they decide that on a year to year basis, which is unpredictable and widely varied. Bill, so what is that? Does it ever go down? The payment in lieu of taxes for no our state oak land. Which, so it's hard to figure out. And that's true of us in general. When when you're when you're this small, the types of things like you, the 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 annual minimum contribution required for your school, which they decide after the governor puts his budget out, those kinds of annual things 
the, the swing and what, what the reimbursement is going to be on the transportation that we do get reimbursed. Mm -hmm. Some years it's 50%, some years it's 90%, some years it's somewhere in between. You can't, we have such an inability to, to plan more than a year out or at all to do any type of long term planning because we cannot predict our revenues from year to year. It's nuts. No. And yeah, uh, but, but we do, there, there are so many things that we want to do. We have, Groups of residents that have worked so hard to try to get things done with Pixie on senior housing. Um, she could speak for an hour about the trials and tribulations of just trying Not to get pretty. And, and we have and, a lot and, of seniors in this we, town. We, we're the whole town of senior citizens. Yeah, and, 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 so you're trying are you so is it goal to build try to build senior housing here? We yeah. to, we've tried yeah. about for 14, 15 years. We've tried to get a complex of like 10 to 12 units. Yeah. And um, there was a good interest. We did, uh, you know, a couple of surveys over these years. It definitely interest. Not everybody. Some people plan to stay in their home or, or go live closer to children. But we have plenty of people that were highly interested. Um, but we became there are a number of problems having to do with the property. Where would it be? Because we don't. We had to have it on accessible roads. Right. Uh, so somebody might give us a good price on something that's way out in the boonies, but we have to have access to emergencies and all of that. And there's just, there's no great land. We took the best land back in the 1800s and everything that's remaining is swamp or granite. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's been, swamps. It's, yeah, yeah, and a lot of <laughs> Lots of beaver dams. <laughs> right. um, and what I'm understanding more recently uh, in talking to people is that no developer is interested in a complex as small as 10 to 12. Oh, no. They won't look at anything over 30 and that's not realistic. But what is realistic is a few, you know, every once in a while, a 150 year old farmhouse comes on the market that could conceivably be purchased and made it. But that is where there's no, there's no funding for to rehab old houses like that in the senior housing. Nobody will touch that. And um, that's what we have. That is our inventory. We can't do anything. Well, maybe, maybe on that, we should be, maybe we can start talking to some. Developers that you know maybe have a history of engaging in you know rural. smaller rural you know um, it's, I mean you know it's I mean I mean I mean I mean I get you know I, I, you know, I mean there's again I don't I don't know what all the projects might be but if it was a if it was a an old farmhouse that you know has been around for a long time maybe it's eligible for historic tax credits. You know, um, maybe there's, you know, some other, you know, federal or state incentives that could be put to, on the table to make it, you know, not as intimidating for a developer to come in and, you know, say, okay, you know, let's, let's, let's kind of reshape this property a little bit. And, but I don't know, I mean, but, we, but, but um, this is helpful because I mean now I, yeah. I know what I understand what, 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 what the issues can be. Yeah, I mean the other thing I'm I'm, I'm I want to be just very honest with you. I mean I, you know, so before I redistrict, I get redistricted out here. Yeah. I mean I I really didn't know very much about Conway or yeah. some of the new communities that I'm, I'm getting. I you know I, that's my fault. I mean, but I it was never well, in my district. About 1,900 people and what is it yeah. about 65 percent are senior. We're in, we, yeah, we we, we were, dropped to like 17 like, something. Yeah, we're yeah, like 70. Yeah, we're down to 70. And I want to change to 55. Thank you. Yeah, he just took the words out of his mouth. Yeah, right now I think yeah. we're at like 1735 yeah. for yeah. residents and. But yeah, yeah. But the, my original district was from you know Worcester. Princeton, Mass to Dartmouth, Mass. It was the I called the Ivy League district, or I mean, it was for Alabama Fall River. Then they changed me. I went out to Metro West, and then they changed me, and I went out no. to Northampton and Amherst. And then, you know, um, I think Congressman Neal, you know, was ready to move on, and so we're um, not sorry. So I so anyway, so I <laughs> but no, but I and I welcome the I, but but having said that, you know, coming out here, I mean, it's beautiful. Yeah, I live in Worcester. Right. And I and you know, one of my pet peeves with the state for years has been how lousy our state board of tourism is trying to get people out to places like yes. you know, seriously. I mean, seriously, like you know, like I mean, 
you know, I, I was in one community, I won't mention it, in one of my new communities, and I, I said, you know, like, I mean, this is, it, it was a beautiful day. Except my phone doesn't always work. <laughs> but I'm like, you know, like, I mean, are there, are there, are there walking trails here? Are there? Oh, I mean, yes. Right. So I, I, I didn't, I'm not, I just, it was a Conway when I, when I, when I asked the question. I said, do you have a list for me to, you know, mm -hmm. or like a brochure I could put in my office in Worcester and in uh, Lemonster or Northampton? You know, I said, well, no, was, you know, I'll tell you where they are, you know, this and this, and that, you know, and I was like, yeah, I know, but I mean, there are people who really, you know, who, who enjoy, you know, drives out into these communities and, and to be able to go for a picnic or go for a walk or whatever, you know, to see, you know, to see, and I said, and I don't, I don't think we really do a good enough job of, of highlighting that. I mean, and, um, you know, and th we have walking trails, you know, in, in, in Worcester and a couple of towns outside of Worcester. They're really incredible that most people in Worcester don't even know exist. Mm -hmm. So we just don't do a good enough job. But I mean, it, you know, if we're trying to figure out how do you generate more activity out here, it's probably not going to be, I'm going to build a new factory because yeah. you don't have the infrastructure to be able to do that. Um, but you know what? It could be a bed and breakfast. It could be going to a local coffee shop it could be you know it could be a number of different things and i think you know i mean we're, we, we've invested a, a lot of federal money over the years in trying to connect worcester to providence through the blackstone valley heritage corridor trail we're trying to build a, a walking bike path from worcester to providence and then over to providence and you know a lot of those communities are small towns once factory, big, big factory towns now. This was bigger than Springfield at one point. Yeah. Yes, we were. Yeah. yeah. But now, you know, I mean, there was, it was the home of the Industrial Revolution. Now, what was made then is no longer made. So these towns are struggling. But some of them are beginning to reinvent themselves by virtue of the fact that people want to know the history. Mm -hmm. they, they, they like the walking pass. They, you know, and they're finding that people are stopping and shopping and you know staying overnight and you know things that uh, you know i mean agritourism is a big deal now i mean people travel from all over the world to see covered bridges right yeah, I, mean, I, I know I, 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 I yeah you have a farm that you have is, cider yeah. too it was i mean that's the thing it's like you know what i know about it now because i yes. because i i represent this area but i didn't know about it before i did you know, and and yeah, I mean, when I hit Fall River, um, my Fall River office was across the street from Lizzie Borden's house. Oh, you know, sure. and and they turned that into a bed and breakfast. Like, <laughs> stay there, right? I mean, my daughter. Yeah, yeah. No. And it's like you know, and they did a lousy job of renovating it. But anyway, people from all over the world came <laughs> to spend the night and see where she chopped up her family. So I mean, I, I mean, it's like people. But I mean, I think that's another conversation too that I, I'm just thinking, you know, it's like this, this is for a relative newcomer out here. It's like, wow, this is really beautiful. And like, like, why didn't I know more about this? Um, and like, why didn't we ever come out here when I was a kid? And why didn't we? And so, and part of it is because we just didn't know. And that's partly our fault, but it's also, it's like, you know, the state ought to be pushing this stuff a lot more. Um, and you know, I'm we're working with Massport over the years. So, if you go to Logan Airport now, when you go through Logan Airport, there is like there, there are like displays promoting tourism in Massachusetts. Oh, okay. And I, we had I get Tom Glenn, who used to be the Massport, to, to do that because I say I fly in and out of Boston every week going back to Fort Washington. And you know, I got off the plane, and then it'd, it'd be a picture of the they had a picture of the Dalai Lama, and it was like some peaceful message. I love the Dalai Lama, but it was like then there's bare walls. Like how many millions of people go through this airport, mm -hmm. and, they and, and they know nothing about you're not even teaching them about Boston, right? I mean, so now there are displays up there. So you know, figuring out ways to. I mean, I just. It's one of the things I want to do in the coming years. Mm -hmm. When 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 the, when the it, when the, the Healy administration appoints everybody, so we know who's in charge of what, then we can maybe do like a, a, a tour out here. I have a couple of suggestions maybe that are coming from the government. One would be 
you know, the uh, east west mobility, you know, former state senator Eric Lenton made a pretty passionate speech in the floor of the Massachusetts State Senate when he left a couple of months ago. Yeah. He wanted to be the public policy transportation advocate. And he talked about getting more federal knowledge for these questions. Well, we're going to work on it. And uh, you can please, we uh, have the state saving grades for the Western part of the we, state. We have, um, you know, uh, there's a, the state has applied for a, a a federal grant coming out of this infrastructure bill that both Congressman Neal and myself, Senator Warren, and Senator Markey are, are pushing the administration hard to get them to approve. And also, too, I mean, the state has two billion dollars in unspent half a month, so some of that money go for East West Rail, or as we call it, or here West East Rail. <laughs> um, and not only that, you you got this uh, fair share tax that was approved, right. yeah, right. And so there'll be more money for schools and more money for transportation and infrastructure uh, in, in the long term. You have this infrastructure bill with twelve billion dollars in new money. So it, it, so the issue is like. Okay, you got this money. We got to make sure they spend it. I think Governor Healy is invested in uh, East West Rail. So we had a meeting with her last week in Washington. Um, but um, but I think the the challenge for you, and I was just in Deerfield, to the challenge for Deerfield too, for everybody, you know, is that you know you don't have a staff of hundreds, yeah. right? Um, so you're not Boston. So you don't have you know the whole wing of grant writers and we're mostly volunteers right. so you yeah so you you don't have yeah. you don't have somebody who's monitoring you know every bill that's passed the state legislature you know every right so we, we you know there's a lot of money out of on the table i think the next two years you know given you know what's happening and you know, my life has changed with the new majority in the House. But given that reality, is that you know, I think the focus has to be on implementation, right? Let's 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 spend this money and make sure it's not all spent in Boston. The, the same thing, the same thing, you know, with with regard to education, we've already lost that battle of the implementation. That the, the nine billion dollar Ed Reform Act, which is on track to get fully funded, um, that we we're we're not we, we don't get any of that. None of it, um, and 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 that's because we're not we're not poor enough, we're not ESL enough, mm -hmm. um, and we're not uh, urban enough. Mm -hmm. and it's, it's part of the reason we're not poor enough because we have a couple of extremely right. wealthy. That's a hundred percent of the yes. yeah. We yeah. have we yeah. have a few extremely wealthy, like multi, 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 multi. Throws all the numbers off. They're probably yeah. 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 yeah, well, that's right. You know, but it does. It throws it off because yes, yeah. exactly. and they average. They average it out, and right. so it totally throws it's off. It's not a fair way to assess. It is them. not yeah. a fair way to and assess. And that, that's how they assess. That's yeah. that's an important figure in how they assess the uh, annual minimum mandatory yeah. contribution to your right. schools. Right. And so we that because the way that that works is we subsidize the, all the rest of us subsidize. Yeah. The very wealthiest yes. among yeah. us, and it's killing them. Um, I figured we lost about fifty thousand on just the yeah. one person a month, at least fifty thousand a year. Employee and my husband won the story. Yeah, we're we're not tipping that scale in any direction. Mm -hmm. Not any of us. Yeah, so, so, so the state feels comes up with this form. Yeah, right. So, right. So, yeah. so and so that's a that's an ongoing discussion that will probably not be fixed in the short term. Mm -hmm. So the question is, how do you work around that in the short term? And that is, you know, trying to go for as much grant money because I know, you know, you don't want to be in a situation where you're taking out loans, because, yeah. right? Yeah. Right. right? Loans will not, yeah. Right. So, <laughs> not help. I, I could advocate for something. The Franklin Regional Council Governor's Police Service is major governmental grant writer right. body for this area. And uh, there's the EDA. Right. They have their really good EDA just got with their makes a really good EDA at the best in the region as well. So the economic development administration, right. Right. yeah. And uh, they have to keep public community resiliency grant. Yeah. It goes to a lot of rural communities around the United States. And if I could suggest you lobby that maybe we can get more money for uh Burcock to start to having more grant money to help towns like us get these grants and or see what other plans that you can only develop in the community but focus in the area that help us. No, and I, 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 I think, look, you know, and I'm also a big believer that, you know, I mean, 
you know, you know, I've had this conversation with the, you know, the chancellor at, at UMass, and I'll have the conversation with the presence of other colleges and you know in this in this region. You, know, you want to teach kids about political science, you want to teach kids about public administration. You know what? A great, you know, a great focus for their coursework could be to assist communities in writing grants. Yeah. You know, uh, you know you right. So, you know, you know, again, uh, yeah, an EDA does have some monies for um with the high grammar, but usually it's aimed at grants that will create jobs. Yes. Well, and, we need that. Here. Right. I know. So if we can figure out that we're going to apply for a grant that is like going to create jobs out here, you know, we have to then we, we can go to EDA and, and try to get some of that money. But but I think in the short for, for me, what is what is most helpful is like like is like you need a new fire engine. You know, you need a new ambulance. I don't know. I'm just making that nice. Yeah, you know, I mean you need a you know, you know, you you have a you need to replace a boilers in the schools. Well, yeah, well, yeah, well, well yeah, you know, so the, 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 and the thing on the schools, I mean I guess I mean again, because there's not a lot of kind of federal grant programs that are not programmatic, mm -hmm. um, that are bricks and mortar. But that's a conversation with whoever the new secretary of education is going to be here in the state. It's like, I mean, all right. Here's our reality. I mean, tell us we we need boilers. You know, we can't end up doing the regionalization thing because of the so like like do you do you, how do we what about solar on the school? You know, well yeah no so there is there there are programs to provide solar uh, and, and solar panels. I mean, this new Inflation Reduction Act. There's lots of money in there for that kind of stuff. I mean, so if you're gonna you know if you if, if there's a plan to try to we not, you know, to diversify the energy reliance on a public building or on a or on a school, you know, that's something we should be talking about. Yeah, because that's about. a big expense. Right. So that's we so that's something that you know we have that's something we can kind of work with you on. I mean that's yeah. I mean that's you know so those kinds of things. So maybe yeah. you know we can get money on it. Well, yeah, right. right. Yeah. And my view is that if you can save money on energy, well then whatever you save on energy you could put toward whatever, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Um yeah. I I have a um, um only one <laughs> well today yeah I'm I'm uh, the the climate activist person here um and the garden and green space person here Good. um so we have um green spaces that get landscaped and then there's nobody to maintain them. Mm -hmm. And the person who ends up maintaining them is the road crew guy, and he just mows everything down. And he's killed off like hundreds, maybe thousands of dollars worth of landscaping. That and then it looks awful because that landscaping no longer exists by just mowing it down. So, you know, we need somebody, a paid person who in this town who does maintenance of some of the public space landscaping. I don't know if it would be a part-time thing, but you know, there's no there's no money in our budget for such a thing. But there's a real need for it because I'm considering putting in this landscaping, but I'm I'm looking at what happened to the last landscaping that was done 19 years ago and it's not there and it just evaporated. Yeah. You know. So that's it's, a it's, more well, I'm trying no, to dedicate. So, you know, so that's, I mean, is, is the land, uh, is this the landscaping on, on state land? It's, or, or no, it, it's, it's, it's just on your it's it's public town property, you know, like a little park that's right out there, a little triangle that's right out there. You know, it's like in the center of town, but um, so yeah, the it's, well, the triangle's owned by the library. So well, they, the library doesn't you know, no, but. They, they don't know that. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, when I talk to them, they don't. Speaking of, because you were talking about climate issues, and if I could, I just wanted to finish the five things that at least oh, yeah, yeah, the yeah. town came up with the priorities. Oh. So it was the public safety building, renovating the town hall. One was protecting our, our land and our natural resources. That was a big priority. Keeping taxes low. Yeah. <laughs> but the last one was that the town has been working, and there's been so many amazing volunteers who have spent so much time on this. The center of Conway is apt to flood. 
And there are, we're trying to figure out, because we're all septic, we're all well. And there's a river. And so what happens is the Pumpkin Hollow Brook and the South River come together if it floods that, you know, yeah. And so we're, we're working on getting MVP, the Municipal Vulnerability Program grant fund. So I was curious if there's ever anything on the federal level that deals with you know, natural disasters or that kind of stuff that we could, we do have a pre-hazard mitigation grant, just to let you know. Yeah, we, we, we should call FEMA. Uh, we should call, uh, I mean, we could help. I mean, you know, if, if you don't mind just kind of emailing me, like all the things we were talking about, you're sitting on the pad, pad in the car. But I mean, uh, and uh, you know, or the Army Corps of Engineers. I mean, I, I mean, we to try to figure out, like, I mean, you, I guess the issue right now is how do you control the flooding? Is that the issue, or do you know how to control the flooding? We, well, mm -hmm. by and large, there, so there was a lot of work done on the entire South River from Ashfield all the way through Conway, and they identified all these projects. It's actually actually on the website, so I can I can send you that link, and and which ones needed to be dealt with first. So the the flooding in town right here was kind of identified as a pretty big but what they're trying to do is maybe widen get the river to go back into its old floodplain because the south river has been manipulated so many times over the years and you know water goes where it wants to right. go but that but that shouldn't be an expense for the town right i mean that's more of a i mean you're, you're talking i mean you're talking about influencing the flow of a of a waterway mm -hmm. that um that really is more of a state responsibility than a so, but, but, so the, the part, part part of part of the reason when, when when these things do take place, the, the big causation of the floods are, is the carrying capacity of the culverts underneath the bridges in town. Right. And the one bridge here in the middle of town is state is a state road. Right. But the other the other culvert right here that is a town road. So it's well, why don't we blame the state? Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, but I mean, I mean, I just it seems to me that before we even. I mean that it would be like we, we should figure out let's like who 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 do we need out here from the state to kind of walk through this with you and to say you know here's what we think we can do or we can't do anything you're on your own you know or maybe there's a you know maybe we can figure out there's a federal you know role in all of that I mean I, but it seems to me that when it comes to a waterway even with I mean state or or, 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 or town roads or bridges. That may be it, it just like I mean, we need somebody to money and tell you, you know, you gotta tear this down or you gotta build this. Right. Gotta... So part of that, that's what that's what the grant that she just explained yeah. is for is to get is to get the data, right. the hydrogeomorphological data. Um and well, well, why uh, is that why is that I'm just trying to why is that your responsibility in the town versus the state's responsibility? Because the state has a formula for bridge repair and, and everything, and we and it's it, a lot. It's has a lot to do with the size of your community, the size of your tax base, yeah. how many but, voters you have. But but but, but where yeah, we it, it, yeah. But uh, but but uh, I would again. I'd say this is going to happen. But I I want to. We have twelve billion dollars more mm -hmm. in infrastructure money. On top of all the billions the federal government gives the state, on top of all the billions the state, right? So there's all this extra. So if ever there was a time to say, okay, hello, you know, maybe maybe can, can you come in and tell us what, you know, like like what what are, what are the possibilities here? Do we need just state DOT or do we need state and federal DOT here? I mean, can we, you know, I mean, we want to figure out. I think we. I think the challenge is going to be like we have to take these on one at a time, right? So, so I think you know, um, you know, I, I think we we. You know, so on this, if I get a little bit of details, well, let me call state and federal DOT and say, here's the. Tell me who should be out here to work with you on this. Just so you're aware, yeah. DOT has been quite good to us okay. just recently. State or federal. State. Okay. State because um there was a there was a bridge in town that was already scheduled to be replaced. And then they were doing an inspection and said, nope, oh, you can't, you just can't even use it anymore. That shut down November 4th. It should be a temporary bridge should be up and running hopefully by the end of this week, Good. which is really Good. fast. Well, you know what? They have the money. So, so yeah, okay. but um, <laughs> so so I think hopefully we have a good relationship yeah, yeah. with them now so we can try. And I, and I know that that's one of the things we need to do is speak because the bridge okay. is owned by DOT. But so this this first round of grant with, with this one, we're just looking to okay. gather the data, which okay. will help us decide what actions need to be okay. taken. But if if we can get anything federal. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's, yeah, let's let's chat. <laughs> just, so for me, I you you just 
you know, we, you know, I know, like, for all of you, you know, it's like drinking water from a fire hole. You can look at like not just what needs to be done here, but like you know, like where do you where do you begin, right? State, federal, uh, and things just change and change, and those programs are up and they're riding the next day, and you know, you gotta start rolling it. So for me, what is most helpful is if you call me or call me and say, okay, you know, let's let's focus today on the fire truck. You know, are you, are we, we're ready to have the conversation on the bridge and on the flooding. You know, what, how can you know? And I'll work with Paul Mark. I'll work with Natalie, and then we'll figure out who we need to bring to the table, and then we'll come up to say, okay, you know, um, and you know, on the landscaping stuff. I mean, you know, it's got to be a way. You've got to be a way to figure something out. There must be something out there. I don't know. You think there's, I, there there's is always something, you know. I, I mean, because I mean, I'm a professional gardener. I can't volunteer to do all the lands. You know, it's like it's a job. You know, it's somebody's got to do it. You know, and it may be in the context of you know we can have this you know discussion. You know, in some of these hill towns, on you know, on how do we uh, 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 do uh, increase tourism on there? Yeah. You know, there, there may be there may yeah. be tourism dollars that you could go. It's such a beautiful sign. Landscape, a lot of the homes that you do, but yeah. really help climbers and some. Yeah, or, or or also, I mean, I go back. I'm not, you know, but but I mean, you know, there are um, landscaping programs in some of our colleges and universities that were probably, you know, I mean, as part of their. Curriculum. Coursework and curriculum. I mean, this could be part of it. I mean, I don't know. We just, I mean, but here's the, you, you don't know what you ask, right? Yeah. So we, we just, so yeah, it's the maintenance, though. It's not, it's not right. The, but I mean, you know, not, these colleges, they have these programs year round. Right. right. But so. they probably, a maintenance program is something you have to be teaching. Somebody, somebody's got to water the stuff in July. Yeah. Frank, my tech has it. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, technical vocational technical school. I mean, I mean, yeah. I mean, you know, we we have uh, you know, we've used our vocational technical school in Worcester to do a lot of things, mm -hmm. quite frankly. But otherwise, you know, you know, and how many farms are here? A lot. Yeah. <laughs> right. we're, we're, we're down. We're down to just two commercial working dairy farms. So. Yeah. Um, and that was. 50 years ago, we had 65. Right. Well, that's the, the dairy farms are going down. Yes. Yeah. So what what other kinds of farms are out here? Most the CSA. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 And he has a farm store. We're going to run a retail store in town. Mm -hmm. And are there, are there, are there, any, are there farmers, farmers out here or people with, with land who are not using their land who would consider, yes. who would consider leasing their land to new farmers? I don't know, no, but there's lots of unutilized farms. Because I'll be honest with you, as I go around, you know, uh, along, along my, around, you know, I, you know, when I visit farm, I do farm tours every year. And, wow. you know, and what are the biggest issues? In addition to climate change, yeah, um, is uh, is the fact that a lot of young farmers yeah. can't get access. Especially in the eastern part of the state, I'm to, I spoke to a few young farmers. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. The people in the eastern part of the state would come here. Right. Yeah, they knew they had land. Yeah. Oh, I think so. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. Um, and, and we do. And boys and boys and stuff that they I'm just saying, I mean, that, that's another. I mean, you're doing a farm tour that we do have. We have, we have one iconic dairy farm. Then we'll do what we'll Third, 13. There, there's three generations that are working it now, the 10th through the 13th generation, with the same farm family on the same. What's the name of the family? Boyden. 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 And I'll be honest with you. I mean, I did so when I get these new communities. I did tours of all the sugar shacks, right. you know? yeah, yeah. and so I, I, you know, climate change, season's getting short, all that kind of stuff. But I learned a couple of things. One is I never knew there were that many sugar shacks out here. <laughs> <laughs> I, never 
Number two, yeah. I learned that my mother was never giving me real maple syrup growing up. <laughs> <laughs> I, really, okay. I told her that. She says, I'm a bad mother. I said, well, I, you didn't know either. Right. You know? Um, well, they say with climate so. change, though, that the maple trees won't be living here in 50 years. Well, or 35. And so that's why. Right. Yeah, so that, but that's why hopefully this is in this inflation reduction act, the biggest investment ever to combat climate change may be. You know the the beginning of a movement to actually dealing with it in a in a realistic way. I mean, the bottom line is that I think what people are going to realize is that being good stewards of the planet can also be good business. Yeah. You know, um, can also you know lower healthcare costs. Can also do a whole bunch of other stuff uh, that it's not punitive. Um, and uh, you know, incentivizing people to do more solar panels, wind turbines, whatever like that. So we, we don't realize much of fossil fuels is not a burden, right? Yeah, it's we need demonstrations, right. like demonstration communities to show other communities that that's the case. The problem is now, we may be imagining that, but there's a lot of people who don't imagine that, what you're saying, that, that it isn't going to be a burden. All they can imagine is, if I don't have my fossil fuels, I'm going to be sitting alone, cold in the dark. I won't have any food. I won't have a job. You know what I mean? The, 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 the stories that we tell ourselves are really important and we have to create new stories. But this community could be one of those That's places true. that could be that. Imagine it could be like this, right. you know? But, you know, we need well, change of change, <laughs> yes, of change of any kind is... For whatever reason, people resist. I mean, we, you know, you know, we we vote in Congress electronically, right? We put a card and we vote yes or no. That's a recent phenomenon. Well, <laughs> you know, forty years ago, you had to, it, it, you know, you had to do it by voice, and people resisted changing, changing it to electronic. Someone would be unconstitutional. You, you can't do a technology. How would you to the city, right? All the kind of stuff, right? And it's like, you know. And, you know, during COVID, I, mean, I chaired the rules committee. I mean, we moved toward, you know, we changed the rules to allow committee hearings to be done remotely. Um, you know, couldn't be there, you know, or even to be able to vote by proxy. Um, and there's a whole process to go through. If you had COVID or someone in your family had COVID, people kind of abused it. But nonetheless, the, you know, we did. And people resisted that. Like, it was, you know, the people who resisted it the most took advantage of it the most, mm -hmm. you know. Okay. But I always joke is people, people, in, you know, people in Congress, you know, who can't quite appreciate that technology is advanced. I mean, they think bifocus is radical. So, you know, we have to, but the bottom line is that, you know, things are, you know, there's, there's lots and lots and lots of possibilities, right? And, you know, and there's, and there's pots of money out there. Um, and it, it's all not under one, department of program you know it's among a, 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 a thousand different things but we are going to spend a big chunk of our time you know trying to figure out how is, how is the state going to spend the apple money how is the state going to spend the infrastructure you know how do you know are, are all the projects that you need infrastructure are they on the tip are so they, you're going to look at what the yeah the state is right yeah i'm, I'm gonna i mean yeah no the state doesn't even know what you're doing yet Obviously. right so that's 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 the you know and, but it, it tends to all stay right. Like, but you got you got a good delegation. I mean, Natalie is fabulous. Paul Mark is going to be great. You know, we we work we, we like each other. We all we all work together, and we will. You know, and I think we're just going to have to get into the habit of kind of regular meetings and and let's you know let's let's, let's see whether we're moving the ball at all and. And so Laura has come up here as well. Yeah. So people are also resistant to shaming when it doesn't make economic sense to them. Yeah. Um, so if we're talking about um, the environment, solar, right. uh, you want to build a new house, someone's going to look at solar and they're going to say, oh, you know, I'm not going to even break even by paying for the solar within 40 years of use of it if I just went and continued with electricity. So it is important for the state to yeah. either make sure that those tax incentives are still there yeah. or to force the federal government to make sure that the tax incentives are there. Because every time I look at something like that, oh, this ends in 2023 or this yeah. ends 
in six months. Well, I mean, the thing on solar is going to be, I mean, hopefully, with some of the incentives in the Inflation Reduction Act, plus hopefully with help from the state, you know, um, the demand is going to be much, much greater. The costs are going to go down, um, you know, and that there's going to be a real serious effort to, you know, to transition, you know, to a new, you know, and, and, you know a new, a new time, right? You know, I, I did, I spoke at a high school. I didn't, I didn't remember this. This is like, I mean, I'm like, you know, like, I'm like, I'm getting like, the way, you know, the things I did when I was in college, you know, I was at a, spoke at a high school in Worcester yesterday. And uh, anyway, in the, in, in, in the inner city, Worcester, these kids were unbelievable. I mean, you know, they, the questions were, insightful they were just really really into passionate about everything and so somebody asked me he said you know um you know uh, who is the who who is who is your first vote for president <laughs> and i was like you know i said okay so i said well so the first time i could vote in a presidential election was in 1980 and uh, that was jimmy carter same here and ronald reagan and John Anderson, right? Yeah. It was the three candidates. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 and those were candidates. And they said, well, which one of those three did you vote for? I said, I voted for any of them. Did you not vote? I said, no. I, I voted for Barry Commoner, who was the head of the <laughs> oh, party. Oh, and he talked about this whole transition. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, I thought at the point, I said, this is the yeah, opportunity. Right? right? And I'm like, I can't believe I, you know. I said, you know, in retrospect, I probably should have wanted to be compared to this stuff. Right, yeah, yeah. But I mean, on the other hand, I'm like, you know what? I, you know, it was a message. Right, but yeah. all these years later, you know, I mean, here we are, you know, again, we're, we're still not quite at the solar transition. We stopped this pipeline that was going to yeah. come in out here, which was a brutal battle. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? I mean, but, um, you know, I think, you know, I, and we, and, and hopefully the, uh, the leadership in the corner office is going to be much more aggressive in, you know, understanding that if we're going to have a solar transition, if we're going to move toward we as those other fossil fuels, it has to be economical because you know people have to afford it. Right? Yeah. You know, because if they can't, then it's a burden. Yeah. You know, and you know, and if, you know, if it's too expensive, then that means they're not paying for food. You know, it means they're not. Paying for other things, you know. So, absolutely. I mean, and that's the whole thing, right? That's yeah, really especially right now, because the gentleman on the, the left up there. Well, he knows both. Yeah, he can. Uh, he can tell you that the, the uh, you know, we only have one electrical provider here, and that they're increasing their costs by almost one hundred percent. That's why I can sort of yeah, exactly. So, so letting you know the state and the federal government knowing that. Is there a place to do a solar farm here or no? Uh, small one. Yeah. Yeah. Ten acres or less. Could you do one here? Was that we, we, well, there has been one. There, there is one in town. Um, it's not a one. It's, it's experiencing technical malfunction. Well, of course. Um, yeah. What about what about with turns? Anybody? Is that a? Is that a? No. That that is theoretically possible. Yeah. There there are there there were sites yeah. identified. Um, all of them are. Challenging to access, and what one of those sites is being made into a cell tower so that Ashfield can. Is, is, it. is the dairy farm? Are they, are they into di digesters or not? No, they don't digest. Uh, they don't. No, I, I mean, I, 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 yeah, I mean, I, you know, we've been working with a number of dairy farms about helping them get digesters. You like the one in Hamlin? Yeah, yeah, Airfield. Yeah. 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 See, it's they're, they're they've been reluctant to sign on to any program because they they. They, they, the it's it's their children's future, and they don't want to tie up their property in any way that could impact the children. You know that's, that's yeah. No, I I, I you know I, I, I you know and I and that's their and they have the right. I mean that's their plan. They could do what they want to do with it. I'm just simply saying that in, in areas that I mean you know, we have a digester in Rutland. You know that normally provides the electricity for the entire farm, but feeds in yeah. the grid that provides the electricity for most of the municipal buildings. You know I mean it, it, it just you know it just it saves. I mean, they're just yeah. But if that's not the you know, I'm just saying that there are there are there are things out there that you know they may work, they may not, and people can just yeah. What one thing that um, 
is concerning about solar fields is that um, you know people cut down for it, right? And and I feel that that's a very bad use of land. That if there's a forest there, we need to we need to preserve our forest. Yeah, I, that didn't happen in time, though. That wasn't. That's not that. That's misinformation. Okay. That did not happen. All right. We we need to make sure that it doesn't. And um, one thing that I'm very concerned about is um, the state just have this climate program, the, the climate bill that they, right. you know, that was signed by everybody. And um, it has all these standards that we're going to need and, and everything. And a lot of the forests, like the forest that occupies 80% of our town, um, is figured in as a carbon offset, you know, for, or a carbon storage. Right. And, and it's used as a calculation, but at the same time, there are plans to log those forests, you know, um, that have been predate this climate bill. And they're still doing it. They're still doing the logging and they're not taking those, those the, that carbon off the books. You know what I mean? They're like fudging the numbers and that's very concerning. Yeah. So the trouble with the states, climate plans over the years has been kind of the trouble with the federal climate plans over the years is we'll pass bills and say, our goal is by 2050 to reduce emissions by X without providing, you know, the Wait, exact yeah. ways you're going to get there without providing the money without, yeah. So I, I, I think, you know, the, the, no, I don't want to cut down forests to put, um, Solar panels, but there are areas where, you know, that are open space that you could use solar panels. Mm -hmm. There are you have rooftops. You have, there, have, you have rooftops. You have, you know, you know, you you have wind. I don't know what parking you, lots. Whether a wind a wind turbine fits here or not, some people get all upset because they don't want to see a, a wind. I'm just simply saying they generate a lot of electricity that offset a lot of a lot of, a lot of so you know every. 20, 30, 50, 100,000 dollars you save on energy costs yeah. is money that you can put in your schools, it's money that you can put you know, toward, you know, Absolutely. your built right. I mean, so Absolutely. and I just think so it I just think that there's parking lots, there's yeah. already constructed spaces that don't have solar panels on them that could have solar panels. So why are we getting the best right. can use all this open space and in, in, in the but 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 the other re issue is is con connection. You you need you know for these things to work here. I mean for you to take advantage of law. I mean they really they have to be in close proximity to you, right? So you know building a, a solar farm in Worcester, Maine, we could be saying does the you will know, I mean it's good for Worcester, right? 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 But so we got to do it how we. All right. So all right. So I think we got a, a, a good. So let me give you my cell, okay? This is recorded. Oh, it is recorded. And Colby's going to give you his card. Okay. Call, you know, call Colby. Um, yeah, we, um, yeah, I shouldn't. Um, I have no. Um, we are. Um, we are. Um, yeah. I, 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 I don't know how your town meetings are here, but um, you know how. how uh, they're very simple. Okay. Yeah. 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 Sometimes. I come from Jersey. Oh, yeah. No. yeah. It's yeah. not rough. Yeah, no, we're. we're, we're, we we're, we're, we're we, uh, so I have people that like me, and I have people that love me. Um, and that's just the way it goes. But the, the your friend Margaret. Oh yeah, well that's a whole. Thing. She's yeah. I'm responsible for throwing her up with committee, so she doesn't even look at me, um, which is a good thing because uh, I don't want to have a conversation with her. <laughs> but no, but with you know, but, but it, you know, this is look, this is a. It's it's good because in, in, in a lot of communities and even in my business, things have become pretty uncivil. Yeah. And you know, so we're in the process now of putting in. Um, security system on our house in Worcester because we get somebody who keeps on putting nails on my tire. Yeah. And then and then the other day someone slashed my tire. So I'm like, 
So I'm like, we gotta really sorry to hear that. We gotta, yeah. you know, so if you don't like me, don't vote for me. Okay. But, in know. this town, you are well loved. No, I just like you could I know. Uh, um, yeah, we we. You know, my, my, I'm going to do some more visits tomorrow, so I'm spending a night in Northampton tonight. My wife's going to meet me. I, so I, I so I, today was Valentine's Day, so I'm trying to call them, <laughs> make a reservation at a restaurant, like for tonight. I mean, every place I called was like nothing, nothing, nothing. Oh, nothing. Oh. And so, but I finally got a reservation at eight thirty tonight. So wait, we in. No, I, I that yeah, I'm just afraid. I, I'm looking for like something I can walk to. Oh, from, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I like to wait in the end. What Natalie was pushing, telling me about a place in um, I should lay down in Hadfield. Um, oh, uh, yes, yes. yes. But they, but, but they were, they were. Oh, I'm sure they, they were way. I mean, it, it's the only place around. Yeah, that was the place. That was the place. No, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was yeah, that was it. Yeah, 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 y